Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Dead Air Nomad L Multi-Cal Suppressor. So far, nothing I've reviewed from Dead Air has made me an unhappy person. Uh, I've been a user of Dead Air for a very long time. In fact, they make one of my favorite muzzle devices. They also make one of my favorite mounting systems. Their quick detach mounting system remains to be one of my favorite. Uh, that doesn't mean that a company can't make a bad product, so I try to approach each new product I review from a company where I've looked at their previous products as objectively as possible. Uh, but I did have high hopes for the Nomad L because I was looking for a suppressor in that category, something a little bit longer I was going to use primarily for bolt guns. But because it's a review, I'm not going to just use it for my intended purposes, and let's be honest, the 2,000 round review, which is my standard review round count that I do on almost everything I review uh, through a bolt gun, was going to be a little taxing and it was going to take much longer than I would like to get a review out as quickly as I can while adding the normal quality that I try to, try to apply to my reviews, putting in the, the proper amount of time in order to get, get something out for a new product. So I used, uh, during the review process, I used the Nomad L on a couple different firearms. I used it on a 300 Blackout, a 762 by 39 AR, uh, also a 308 and a 65 Creedmoor. So I'm getting a couple different calibers through there just to test the overall veracity and performance of the Nomad L. The Nomad L over the, the Nomad, which uh, I have done a review on in the past, but if you're curious what makes the L different from the Nomad is, it's, it's a longer suppressor. It adds three baffles, which gives you uh, just extra, uh, just under an extra two inches of length for the suppressor. Now, as far as purposes go, that's kind of up to you what you'd use it for, but like I said in the beginning of the video, my main intent for the Nomad L was for use on a bolt gun, to make a bolt gun as quiet as I could get it. Uh, but it has, you know, it's multi-cal, if you use their quick detach and that attach attachment system, you can put it on pretty much anything you want to. As far as features go, the Nomad L is 17.4 stainless and grade 5 titanium, just like the Nomad 30 or the traditional length Nomad. Uh, what I found with the original Nomad is it's, uh, even though it's not necessarily intended for super hard use, like long, prolonged, full auto fire, machine gun use or anything like that, it was still a very durable suppressor. Uh, and I ran that thing, if you watched that video, if you remember that video, I ran that thing really hard. And the Nomad L, kind of no difference. Although it did spend time on bolt guns during the review process, I also spent a lot of that 2,000 round shoot at 7.62x39 and 300 blackout. Now, a concern a lot of people are going to have with that longer can, I mean, we're talking about an 8.3 inch suppressor, and that's it, not counting if you throw the QD system on it, or if you add Dead Air's e-brake, which is another cool little feature that I use throughout the review process. Uh, but even with that, that length, that 8.3 inches, uh, it's only coming in at 18, just over 18 ounces. That's really not bad weight for the kind of suppressor you're getting. And if you go the opposite direction with it, like I did during the review process, uh, putting it on a 9 inch uh, 300 blackout, you can make subsonic rounds very, very quiet with 8 inches of suppressor. Uh, I was actually kind of tickled with that just uh, for, for the giggle factor of being able to shoot that 300 blackout subsonic, especially at greater distances, so you hear that little ping. ping. And that's something I liked a lot. You got different mounting options, like I like said a few times, is the traditional uh, dead air QD system, but you also go direct thread uh, for your traditional tread patterns. And if you need a metric thread, like I did for my 308 Tika, I used a silencer code direct thread attachment, attachment uh, and worked great. And I was able to put it on that metric, which that's one thing that really annoys me about Tika is that metric thread pattern. But I was still able to put the suppressor on there uh, and use it for the regular review process. Getting into the review process, very first thing I'm gonna do is that 500 round burn down. Is shooting 500 rounds through the suppressor as quickly as I can going to cause any potential issues that you wouldn't necessarily see um, if you were shooting 500 rounds over the period of a day? Uh, generally, on select or I should say semi-auto only, it takes me three to four minutes to fire those 500 rounds, which is getting the gun very hot. Uh, I chose to do the, the burn down on a 300 blackout, shooting both super and subsonic ammunition. So, without uh, further delay, here's your 500 round burn down.
first to last round, no issues whatsoever uh, with the uh, the Nomad L. Uh, tone didn't really change. Uh, I didn't see any welds. Looked like they were stressed. Uh, can got really hot, of course, uh, but it continued to do its job, which is suppress the firearm. So we're definitely a pass there. Continue on with the review process. Another 1,500 rounds after that. Uh, like I said, shot 308 obviously on, on my Tika using it as a bolt gun and I was very pleased on that Tika 308 just how quiet that suppressor was. Uh, shooting traditional supersonic 168 grain and 175 grain ammunition out of that gun um, it, it gives a really good tone for the 308 cartridge and I already mentioned on 300 blackout especially with the subsonics it's a really stupid quiet suppressor uh, on, even on an AR. If I had a bolt gun 300 it would be even better. Using on the 762 by 39 I threw the e-brake on there. I used the e-brake a couple different times. Uh, I do like that attachment. I'll do a separate video on that in the future. I really should have had one out by now, but I just haven't been focused on that because it's kind of a small thing compared to the other big things that i got to work on. Um, but using on a 762 by 39 um, that particular caliber in an AR platform can be notoriously finicky. I'm using it on a PWS, which is a adjustable gas system, and that's the best way I've found to shoot the 762 by 39 through an AR platform. Generally, the failing point is the magazines, but some of the DI guns I've had in the past that were chambered in 762 by 39 were a little ridiculous when you suppressed them. It's not something I experienced at all in this case, using that PWS platform. Uh, having the adjustable gas definitely helps, but the suppressor is also really, really long, so it adds a really good tone to the 762 by 39 round. Of course, if you're going to use the Nomad on uh, any kind of comblock firearm, you got to make sure, of course, that you have a concentric barrel. Uh, but if you shoot suppressed AKs, you already know that. Another concern we have with suppressors is uh, point of aim shift. Is there going to be a shift when you remove the suppressor? The answer is yes, there's going to be a shift. Different things are happening to the bullet when they're suppressed versus when it's not suppressed. Generally, that's something I'm going to check, especially on this suppressor, something I plan on using on more of a proficient, precision platform. I did a return to zero check on there, I should say a POI check, to see if I was going to uh, have a shift in my point of aim, point of impact when I removed the suppressor. Uh, so real quick, here's a five round group fired suppressed Nomad L through my Tika 308. And here's a five round group fired with the suppressor removed. Of course that's at 100 yards, I'm really happy with that. There's going to be a shift. Some suppressors cause more, some suppressors... I, I actually I can't say some suppressors cause less because I think of most of the suppressors I have I'm just you know recalling in my mind I don't think anyone has less necessarily less of a point of aim point of impact shift at 100 yards on that cartridge than the Nomad L. I'm really happy with that shift. And another thing is it is repeatable. Uh, took the suppressor off, fired another five round group, put the suppressor back on, fired another five round group, and I was seeing consistent shift in that point of aim point of impact. And consistency is something I can count on. So I can dope for that if I really need to. Me personally, unless I'm literally shooting bullseyes, that's not something I'm necessarily going to worry about at 100 yards. Now, if I shoot in three, four, 500, probably something I'd take into account a little bit more than that. But me, once the suppressor goes on the Tika, when, once I'm done with my review process, that's where it's just going to stay. And the only time it's going to come off is when I clean the gun. So, for me, uh, point of impact, point of aim, point of impact shift isn't really that big of a deal, but if you plan on using a Nomad L or whatever suppressor you're in the market for, uh, for more versatility, you're going to use it on a bunch of different platforms, you have to be aware, of course, that there is going to be a point of aim, point of impact shift. For the purpose of this video, I just checked it on the 308, but not bad at all. So if you're thinking more of a precision-based application for your Nomad L, if you plan on getting one, uh, you can trust that the, the point of aim, point of impact shift is not going to be that extreme, at least course sample size of one, shooting it on the Tika that I used for the review. What else is there when it comes to suppressors? Uh, pressure. we got to think about gas. Uh, on a bolt gun, not something you're necessarily going to notice. On a piston gun, not necessarily something you're going to notice. Uh, the two ARs I used for this review process are both piston guns. A, uh, a PWS Mark 109 Mod 2 in 300 Blackout and a PWS Mark 11 
uh, Mod 2 and 762 by 39 That being said, you, you still build up that good gas volume in the can. Um, using it in low light conditions, uh, muzzle flash, every suppressor is going to have some degree of muzzle flash. When I shut, even when I was shooting it with the e-brake at night, muzzle flash was kind of a non-issue. Shooting it without the e-brake, muzzle flash was a non-issue. Uh, the low light signature for the Nomad L is really, really good. Uh, across every platform that I shot it on. I'm not going to say that the can won't have a lot of gas issues if you're shooting on a traditional DI, either 5.56 or, or 308 or 300 blackout, but I'm saying from my experience with the review process, I didn't necessarily notice a whole bunch of excess gas coming back at me. And of course that gas management can be just as much suppressor as it can be attributed to the platform that you're shooting the suppressor on, so it's something you definitely have to take concern. So if you have a suppressor that gas is really bad, put it on a different gun and see if the same thing is occurring. Uh, you may find that it's that relationship between those two parts versus it's always the suppressor's fault or it's always the rifle's fault. I was very pleased with the overall performance of the Nomad L. It didn't have me cause it didn't cause me to lose any accuracy with the platforms I use it on. In fact, on the Tika, it did tighten things up just a little bit for that precision purposes that I wanted it for. Uh, my my suggestion would be to use this on more of a or of a precision platform. Um, or hunting platform, something you're going to use, you know, bolt gun or even semi-auto for extended distance shooting um, to tame that 308 cartridge noise just a little bit more. Uh, you can, of course, use it on a traditional, you know, 5.56, but unless you're shooting an SBR, that 8 inch as a suppressor is going to make the rifle a little unwieldy for most purposes. Not saying you can't do it, uh, but it's not something I'd recommend. This is something I would use more on a rifle that's not going to have to be maneuvered for either CQB purposes or general range purposes, such as like a 16 or a 14.5 pen AR. Uh, on a bolt gun that doesn't have the same concerns being moving around as much and have to be as mobile, um, it, it definitely makes for a very um, pleasant suppressor to use for those purposes. So if you are looking for uh, a little bit longer suppressor to, to quiet things down a little bit more, especially bring that pain threshold down, Nomad L's got a great tone on, on the, the firearms that I used it for in the review process, the 300 Blackout, 762x39, and 308, and of course the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, I like the tone a lot. I think it's got a good sound regardless of the barrel lengths that I used on. I mean, 9 inch all the way up to the, the ridiculously long 6.5 Creedmoor Tika. Um, I don't think, uh, in the, especially for the price range and the accessories and the options that you get from Dead Air, you'd be hard pressed to find a better can in that category. So if you're looking for something a little bit longer, to, especially for precision purposes, that's, that's the whole reason that I wanted the Nomad L. I'm glad Dead Air sent one out to me. Um, you don't really have to look any further than this. I'm Aaron Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.